Quelque chose qui s'appelle Johnny peut pas danser. Well, hot from the taters and corn and sausage, so they can be pulled out separately. Panel for stirring. Big basket for puffers. First question is, how much water do you need in the pot to cook the coffee if you need? Well, one thing you can always do, first you fill up your pot pretty much to the brown. So I got my pot mostly full of water, I'm going to take my crawfish and dump it into the basket. And then this way, I can finish filling up the bucket with pot with water. Basically, I want that water line to just up to the top of where the basket is. A little bit more. Now that I have my water level set where I want it, and I know this is 29, 30 pounds of crawfish, I just gotta make a mental note for where the water line is. I'll pull these guys out. Because they gotta soak anyway. Perfect. I'll transfer them to the ice chest. Now, with that, I can look at my water line in my pot and see that it's a couple inches below the last rivet. So all I gotta do is remember that's where it's at when I do 29, 30 pounds of pumping. So now, I've dumped this dirty water out. Make sure our pot is centered well on the burner before we fill it up with water because once it's in full of water, you're not really going to be able to move it very easily. We want to get our crawfish on the water so we can start to purge. There we go. Now just gently put the lid on those guys to keep them from trying to escape. And now we fill up our pot to our line. Put our fill line. Time to get the burner lit. Long matchstick. Now with that going, we're gonna crank it up, get it pretty loud, get the lid on, get that water boiling. thing I do is I cook my taters, corn, sausage, and all that separately, and I have a smaller pot, smaller basket, sorry, that I put inside the other basket. I will cook the corn, taters, and sausage first, and those will stay hot in the ice chest. So I have a smaller Arctic ice chest I use, or uh, once the crawfish, once the veggies come out, the crawfish are going right in, so the, the, the taters and whatnot can go in there, and you'll see later in the video. So, there we go. We got our sausage, corn, taters, and garlic. Normally on any regular day, I would also just toss in a bunch of lemons and some onion to flavor the water even more. But, for this boil, we're going quick and easy. And, and also by uh, not putting in the onions and uh, lemon, it keeps the water a little cleaner. You don't have all those bald peels to deal with. But doing it the way I do it with the uh, secondary basket does help with that because once that part is cooked, it's given all the flavor into the water it's going to give and you pull it out. Now the garlic, I just removed the outer peel. Toss the whole thing in there. These will cook at about the same speed as the taters. 
and that's my yardstick. And the taters are fork tender or firm-ish is when I pull it because they're going to continue to cook when you pull them out and stick them in the ice chest to keep them warm. I only have three heads of garlic. I normally put in anywhere from four to six because I like garlic. But these are trying times with the, uh, well, let's not even talk about it, but let's just say it's hard to get garlic right now. So we get what we can get. So we get the garlic and the taters in first. And it's just a little baby red potatoes. Those are, if you can't get those, you can do bigger potatoes if you like. Corn, frozen corn on the cob. I've done fresh corn before and it's good, but doesn't cook up, with, at least when they're frozen, they cook at the same speed as everything else is what I found. So everybody in the pot, along with the frozen sausage. If you've been paying attention, you've noticed, hey, he hasn't put any seasoning in that water yet. Well, that's where it comes from. Don't mess around with anything else. Zatarain's crab ball. That's what you want to get. Now, they get a couple different flavor varieties of this. They got an extra spicy, they have a pro boil, and to be quite frank, there's not a whole lot of difference between the three. Uh, they probably add a little bit of extra cayenne pepper in the what they call the extra spicy But I don't need that because I'm gonna add another secret ingredient, which you'll see in just a minute now For the taters and corn and all of that Especially the uh, corn they tend to like to soak up the spice so To start with I'm probably gonna only put half this container in that pot That should be good for now. Now we're going to get this thing back up to a rolling boil. I'll probably check it every, uh, well, they give it 15 minutes on boil and then come back to it and just kind of monitor it. Like I said, I'm looking for those taters to be uh, on the firm side, but mostly done because they will keep cooking once you take them out. Don't get to turn the heat back up. Okay, it's probably been 15, 20 minutes on a hard boil. These little taters do not take long to cook. One looks nice and plump. And, yep, that's a firm fart tender, so our taters are done. So we're going to go ahead and yank these out and stick them in the getty to keep them warm. Paddle is one of the most useful Cajun tools you can have. Steamy goodness. Now we're basically ready to put our crawfish in. But since crabs technically take a little bit longer to cook than crawfish, we're going to get those guys in first. But yes, we're not just doing crawfish. We're doing blue crab. That makes it easy. And we got one runaway. Let's get him. Oh, a little tip for the uninitiated. If you pick him up by the rear joint of his back leg, he can't pinch you. But pick him up anywhere else and he can probably get a bite on you. So those guys are in. Now for the crawfish. So we're going to drain the water. Okay, note to self, 
open the lid before you pull the drain plugs. I forgot about the suction of that, uh, the, the seal, the top seal is pretty airtight. And also, another tip for the initiated. Once you pick up a crawfish behind the head, you don't want to pick him up at the back of the tail. You pick him up on his head, and he can't get you. Now, we got the crawfish in. We've got the towel. Make sure everybody's in the pool. Here's where we add the rest of the seasoning right on top. And yes, if you're doing a sack of crawfish, you want to use the whole container. Now, the secret ingredient. Liquid crab boil. Now, on the bottle, they give you directions if you're doing a very small pot, like five pounds. But if you extrapolate it, eh, it roughly comes out to about two cups per sack. That's going to give you a real good spicy flavor. Now, caution for those with breathing disorders, asthma, the, that like, uh, and this is serious, no joke. Um, when this stuff gets to boiling, it can be a challenge to breathe if you have asthma or the like. So, definitely the sort of thing, if you're going to use it, do it outside in a well ventilated area and uh, usually what I do is uh, my wife won't come out to begin dinner, lunch, whatever until the boiling is complete. On the crab boil container there's some pretty good uh, guidelines for how much to use, how long to cook, how long to soak and that's pretty much what I go by. But the only thing I do differently is I soak it longer because the key is the longer you soak it, the saltier and spicier your crawfish, i.e. seafood, will get. So now we just wait for it to come up to a boil, let it cook for the uh, time suggested, and then we turn the boil off and we wait. Now here's the super hard part. Timer just went off for the boil, which I did for three minutes. Now, you need to set your timer for the soak, but don't touch the lid. I know you want to look. You want to pull one out and taste it, but they got to soak. Don't touch the lid. Set your timer, go get your table ready, make your sauce, get some rags, but don't open the pot. Here's my super, super, secret sauce that I don't really haven't shown anybody. Basically, what you need is mustard, ketchup. I like the sriracha spicy. Or you can use regular good old-fashioned Heinz ketchup. And gots to be Hellman's mayonnaise. And if you want it even more spicy, Tabasco. Now what's the secret ratio? Super simple, one to one to one. So I start with the mayo and give me a tablespoon. So for example, nice lumpy tablespoon of mayo. And that's gonna be more than plenty. Tablespoon of the ketchup. fashion yellow French's mustard. Again, a good old healthy tablespoon. Now, I don't know why it is, but you see others make their, their dipping sauce, they call it romalade. It's basically just ketchup and mayonnaise. I don't know, maybe I got some German blood in me, but I like the mustard. Grab a little 
this. Yeah, the sriracha really adds a good spice to it. But if you want it even spicier, a few extra drops of good old Tabasco. Stir that in. The dip is ready. Let's go check that crawfish. Okay, so for the record, also want to note that that soak time was 45 minutes, and I would consider that pretty much perfect. And I know the lens is a little fogged over right now because there's a lot of steam coming off the crawfish. Basically, I let these drain, go transfer them to the uh, the tub to keep them warm, and it's lunch time. And there we go, a table full of seafood ready to go, et c'est si bon. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I'll do my best to answer. And thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.